introduce my esteemed colleagues Mo and Sandra. They're going to be talking about innovative uses of video in education. And uh, my notes as a chair say that I must encourage you to tweet. Please tweet. <laughs> and enjoy the session. Oh, wow. It's great to see so many people here. Thanks a lot. It's, uh, hopefully we're going to have some interesting things to talk about with this uh, session about video in education. Um, my name is Mo, I'm from uh, Arts and Social Sciences, I'm an Educational Technologist. I'm Sandra and I'm from the Learning De Development Centre. Um, first thing, I just want to take one or two minutes before we get started properly with all of our activities and discussion points and just tell you a little bit about the, the, uh, what's involved in setting this up. We set up back uh, earlier this academic year. We had this idea that we wanted to start creating a community of peop around people who were interested in using video in teaching and learning, whether it's producing, sharing, watching video, using it in their lectures, seminars, or having students produce and share their own videos. We wanted to, we wanted to create an, a community of people at City here who were interested in sharing their ideas and their experience around that. So. Partly it's about what we as educational technologists can give to you, but I think m actually much more it's about as a community what can we share with each other. So really it's people like you who've decided to come to this session who are the basis of that whole group. So we thought we'll start a special interest group and we'll give it a bit of an online presence, but really what we want is to build the community. So I just want to point out really just a couple of things before we get cracking with, with this session. Um, firstly, if you're interested in this and you want to follow along and you want to find out more about how video can be used in education, try our Scoop It. Uh, if you Google Scoop It video in education, you'll find City's uh, SIG page, which just collects together interesting bits and bobs that we find online about video in higher education. And you can uh, suggest bits to add to it as well uh, with the suggest button that you'll find on the, on the page there. Secondly, one of the other things which we organised last year, and we we'll hope to do again in subsequent years, is we ran our first webinar with three case studies. Um, they were all by educational technologists, but again, we'd, we'd prefer, we'd like, really love for other people to be sharing their case studies and their experience using video. So we ran our first video, uh, video webinar back in, I think, November last year. A pretty good response rate, and we'd like to do more of them. So. Anybody who's wanting to contribute, participate in these kind of things, do get in touch. Get in touch with the local educational technologist, the LDC, myself. Um, and we'd really love to hear from you and, and what you want to get out of a community like this. I'm going to pass over to you. Uh, I have to give you, we've got one microphone, so I'm going to give you this. <laughs> and it means that you can talk and I have to be quiet. Thanks, Mo. Uh, that's great. Hi. Um, I'd just like to say, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, Diana's talk. And I was. As usual, those things I get quite excited and thinks of lots of things. But one thing I did think was that although um, you know is is you know the amount of teachers to student ratio is based on you know how many people you're going to be teaching that academic year, how many courses are running. But at City, there is a substantial investment in um, people like educational technologists to help support academic staff and students in their education and in using technologies um, and we're lucky this year I think uh, with the backing of all of the schools to have in made some well good investments in some some technologies that are pedagogically sound um, that should help you innovate or just teach as, as well as you'd like to <laughs> not necessarily having to innovate or turn everything upside down or flip it every five minutes but actually to make to make it really easy for you to integrate multimedia into your teaching and learning, whether it's online or in the lecture hall or group rooms. Um, so what we've actually got uh, today is, uh, I was thinking we've got a combination of things to inspire you and, uh, and some, some, almost some tasters so you can see what other people have done. So um, that's the kind of uh, what we've got on offer. Um, now I need to find the Prezi. Here we go. We have to use all the technologies. That's our problem sometimes. <laughs> um, so in, uh, in my little bit, I'm not even sure. Where have I gone now? There we go, that one. Um, stop, 
I've just gone to a different one, probably. Um, what you'll see in, uh, on the tables, um, I've uh, <laughs> cast around some resources. Um, what I'm going to do is give a little presentation about some of the things you can do with video and some of the things people have done already with video. Um, and I'd just like you to kind of think about which of the, the pick and mix, as we've called it, um, takes your fancy or interests you in something you might like to do. And uh, we'll have a little uh, group, group exercise after the presentation to uh, come up with some ideas. Um, so what I've got here is, oh dearie me, how to click that one. Um, first of all, I suppose I just wanted to um, highlight what we already do um, in Moodle. I suppose a lot of what we just say it's in Moodle, um, but what you're actually doing in Moodle is blending your learning. You're providing things 24-7, uh, resources or activities group discussions to complement your face-to-face -face teaching. So whether you know it or not, you're, you're blending. So there we go. So from simply being able to embed a movie in the page or connect a lecture with the slides that are associated to it, um, make a little how-to. This one's a how-to about Moodle, but that's just because it's we're educational technologists. So a little how-to screen recording. And I know in different subject areas, some of these things are very common. Other areas or schools, they're not used. So again, Diana's idea of us sharing and swapping some of these uh, signature pedagogies or uh, you know, good ideas um, is, is part of the reason we like to come to events like this and, and try and spread the word. Um, here, for instance, this is getting a little bit fancier where we're actually making videos with staff that also uh, employ video devices. So for instance, this is a, a split screen. So you've got both what the apparatus is doing and actually what it's seeing. So this is where we're getting a bit, bit more, bit cleverer, I think, and um, a bit more about actually learning from video. What devices are there that we can use? So there's there were just a little range of examples from City. Um, another area that is growing, and again, we're hoping that some of the tools that we've chosen um, will help this, is with students making their own videos, capturing um, short clips of, uh, say, for instance, their comments, or capturing things that they're... Um, doing on placements um, and then collecting them together or capturing their own um, skills and presentations. So quite common is people talking to camera and student groups giving presentations, having them recorded. Uh, also, we had um, students in um, School of Health Sciences making a kind of whole revision piece. Uh, the, the third year is making a piece for the second year on how to, what the practical exam is all about. They were guided by a tutor, but it was their idea actually to make, make it, and then we helped out. So that was an interesting piece. Um, this one really I've popped in as a concept, and I've heard it being mentioned today, and it is this flip, flipped lecture thing, the idea of... Uh, with quite, some quite nice slides from University of Mi Michigan State, just about, it's this idea of mixing what happens outside the classroom and inside the classroom, I guess. And um, it's not really just about making them watch the video before they get there. <laughs> um, but there's some quite nice work being done on it at different levels of education, actually. And I think this Khan Academy is the... The one that where the video thing comes to mind, somebody talking through a mathematical problem and then they've tried that at home and then they, you come in and try it out as a group. Uh, but it does have implications possibly for these larger groups that are going to descend on us in the future. So that's flipped lecture. It's a kind of popular term at the minute. Um, something really quite simple that uh, has grown also is the... A talking head, a tutor, 
recording something and maybe popping it into Moodle. Um, I know they've been quite successful with explaining the assessment criteria or explaining the assignment, that kind of just adding to it that talk through of what it is you need to do. That's, that's been popular. Um, as well as o um, audio or video feedback. Um, this is a, a, from a talking head that we made in the studio, just so we have, you know, we've got a studio, we've got lights, cameras, we can make it all beautiful. Um, and then we've got a bit rough and ready one from Mo here. <laughs> this is a, it's a sort of webcam from his prison cell, I think, or <laughs> it must be his office. <laughs> a little webcam recording into a, it's sitting in a Moodle page, I think. Just, uh, just to show you that, that, you know, we can do sort of fancy ones as well as... Uh, uh, and then... Together we've put talking heads and lecture capture and um, this is just a clip from the new system that's coming that we are quite excited about, um, which is a lecture capture system which captures, your, captures you, <laughs> what's on your computer screen and what you're saying, obviously, so video, audio and slides. But the really nice thing about it is when you come back to it you can you can navigate in different ways, so you can whiz through the slides or whiz through the timeline, get to the bit that you want to get to. Um, so that's, that's lecture capture, where it's taking the whole thing. Okay, one, another one, another one lovely thing that, that is developing is the use of blogs, which um, has taken off, and City University and kind of have uh, provided a blogging platform for all students and staff this year and it's um, EduBlogs so it's, it's a WordPress blog so it's the real thing it's not kind of a half-baked one that you know they made to fit in to something else it's the real thing uh, and it's become very successful and what's nice of course we want to take it over for uh, video blogging and uh, this is just a little example of some students using they're using a blog piece to attract people to their research project. But obviously, blogs could be used, you know, in many ways and to keep, you know, kind of more minute by minute or day by day um, records of things. So video blogging, we, we have the technology and a nice platform that's all, that's beautiful. So uh, that's developing here at City as well. Um, Another thing that really is from the from the from early use of video or recordings is that idea of uh, bringing things in that have been on the television uh, on the sort of main channels. Um, and this used to be where you asked the library to record BBC next week, that kind of thing, which was great. And then gradually that kind of went quiet, and. But you know what? It's so useful. It's, it's back again. And now it's called, um, we have it here now this year, um, and it's called Bob, Box of Broadcasts. So here you can basically record what's coming on TV. But actually what it is, because this is a, a system that lots of UK universities are part of, whatever anybody else has recorded, you can have as well. So I must admit, I've been very lazy and whenever I've wanted to look for a programme, it's already been recorded. I didn't really have to think. It kind of seems to almost record everything. Um, but uh, it's been quite nice um, for grabbing things from the news, perhaps, if your topic is, uh, if your subject area has topical interest. I know not all of them do, but, you know, the business school, I always think, the business school, what's in the news? Where are the chairs going? Um, but what's clever about this one um, is that you can actually also take a clip. So you only want two minutes to show in the lecture. You don't want to be scrolling through the whole thing. You take a clip. There's an easy sort of chop, chop. And that is then in your account. There's your clip. You can add it to Moodle, show it in the lecture hall and, it's, it, and share it among the team as well. So it's kind of brought it all back in, really. It's brought those, you know, VHS tapes back but in a much more uh, easy-to-use way. Um, so that really is a little bit of a, uh, a flying... Oh, get back. <laughs> a flying visit around 
it is a bit of a pick and mix, some concepts, some new tools mentioned, um, some, I hope, good pedagogical examples of tried and tested things people have done using video-based technology here at City. Um, what I'd like to do is just for you in your tables um, to have a look, uh, have a think about one or two of these that grab your attention and there might be a sort of coloured card that fits your favourite so please do do take one. Um, what we'd really like to know um, is of course uh, what I meant to say at the beginning we we really wish to as we say inspire you and give you some good ideas but as part of the vital uh, the video SIG and as education technologists we really want to know what what's catching your attention so then when we're out uh, you know training and helping people um, for next year. We know what, what some of the themes are, so I know people are quite keen to know. So what we'd like is um, for you to um, think about what one or two uses that, that, that you'd like to use, but also just to give us a little idea of who you would use it, what kind of level or for what task would you use it for. And um, if I'll just give you five minutes to do that and then we'll, we'll sort of have a little bit of feedback from each table. But if you don't mind writing them down on the post-it notes and sticking them on the poster and then we'll collect them back um, so I can see what everyone's interested in. Uh, if it was a smaller group, we'd just have one from everybody, but we're, we're busy this year. So, um, OK, so if you have a look, as I said, oh, and I've put out, because I am from the Learning Development Centre and have to know about theory, so I've put out the Bloom's Taxonomy, of course, to help you with uh, possibly to think about how you could use video at different, you know, those different levels of, um, of learning. So... Let's just add one thing as well, Sandra, which is just, just following on from you know, Diana's keynote, the ideas in her keynote about starting with an approach, starting with what you want to do and moving on to what tools are you going to use. We are going to talk a little bit in this session about some of the tools that are becoming available for you to use here. But A, we can't do all of them in 45 minutes, and B, we don't want to do things back to front. So the point of this discussion in your tables to begin with is to think about what is it that you actually want to be able to do rather than how are you going to do it and hopefully we'll be able to give you some at least you know begin to give you some ideas of how you would do it later in the session but I do, yeah I just don't want us to get too bogged down with but I don't know how to do that or I don't know oh, what yes. I could use to do that because we'll hopefully come on to that a little bit things. yeah we've got magical things exactly so <laughs> it'll all be fine We've got, thanks to the Cass Business School, who put together this uh, pick and mix printed cards. Printed cards. So what we've got on here is these kind of ones. Oh, a few of those different ideas. Um, what came to mind? Anyone that you've got here? Uh, earlier on, you know, all right then everybody I think we better uh, try and stick to time and um, carry on with the next bit of the session and um, what we were hoping to do is just from the discussions on your table tables just get a very very quick idea from each table of some of the things which have jumped out at you as something you'd like to try so far or any, um, any of the themes which have come up in your discussion. Just about the kind of things which you'd like to be able to achieve or perhaps some of the things which you've seen in Sandra's presentation so far which, which have inspired you. Um, and I think uh, if, if one person from each table would just like to give a, perhaps a one minute summary of uh, one of those things, that would be, that'd be great. <laughs> Should we start with this table at the front here? Is there anything that jumped out from your discussion? We were, we were quite keen on video, using the use of video. Um, and um, you were talking about your students videoing them before they go off and reach big patients and then be able to see what is, how they are when they see themselves back in real life. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then they go and meet patients and then actually maybe videoing them a bit later when they've actually made a significant improvement so that they can see uh, the, the improvements. Okay. 
I, I was saying that I wanted something I wanted to do was to actually have a video message and start every week. We were talking about the difficulties of actually engaging with students, and now a lot of them don't read emails. And I thought this was quite a, might be an innovative way mm. of actually encouraging them then to read the emails. Uh, I'm going to be really brutal there and cut you off yeah, in just because okay. of time, but okay, thank well, you very one, much. One yeah. other thing, yeah. we j just quickly, texting. We wondered if it was possible to text uh, students with room changes and things like that. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's come back. Keep that in mind, yeah. Um, maybe from the back table there is anything you'd like to add to that. <laughs> Richard. Shall I read this? Yeah, my so. Uh, so we talked about capture and reflect quite a bit. Um, recording lectures particularly useful for dyslexic students. We have to watch it back. Um, and two of us work in careers, and we really want to record the careers workshops because as students on their masters get so busy, they haven't got time to always go. Um, Student videos, we had some discussion around concern around content going up and it actually being seen as correct because it's on such a professional um, kind of system. Um, I know there's some discussions in our school about concerns with this existing that students won't now fly into lectures, etc. Mm -hmm. um, thinking out loud um, is a very important thing for case study interview practice, um, so it's a good way for them to be able to see back. Um, and other voices, a really good way of linking to the real world and showing academic examples or um, things we mm. do in workshops with the real world and examples. Um, and just sound very professional, you don't have to scan through things and etc. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. A couple of themes, similar themes there. From the middle table, the, uh, the back here, is there any, any one thing which you'd want to feed back on, Amanda? Um, the idea of capturing advice from students that could be given to new students, we thought that was a really good way to pass on learning and top tips that didn't come from the staff. We also um, really like the idea of reflective journaling, using mm. video, a different multimedia platform to capture students as they come in, their goals, their aspirations, and then they can, I don't know how this would work, but they would feed back into that as it goes along, it's not one static video, it becomes a means by which they can go back and mm. disperse into what they said at different points throughout the entire year. And then there was another element, um, the, the Echo platform, I think it is, where we um, were talking about how you do the, the real-time feedback and the potential to have that available as an interactive dialogue for a longer period of time in that particular area, both the video and the lectures. Mm. Thank you. Yep, yeah, OK. Um, should we move on to the uh, table in the corner there? Yeah, so. This table was slightly law heavy. Right. And, uh, yeah. Lawyers are associated with innovation, of course. <laughs> 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 we were quite interested in uh, lecture capture mm -hmm. uh, so that students can use the uh, recordings for revision purposes uh, later on in the programme. Uh, and also video talking heads to explain the more difficult bits of the curriculum, uh, and also to do recordings that we can use for marketing. Mm. Because you mm. never have too many lawyers. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And obviously there is some overlap there, isn't there? Absolutely. That was the whole iTunes U thing, wasn't it? Content yeah. advertising. Yeah. It's uh, it's not marketing material. It's it's just what happens day 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 in day out yeah. in in the classroom actually makes good marketing in itself. A little taster of what's going on. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, anything else we want to share from this final table? Well, we, we had a discussion about the merits and not so of flipping lectures. But then um, one of the things I was saying I was quite interested in doing was teaching audio and video editing using screencasts. Because um, journalism, we spend a lot of time teaching the same thing. So whether you could put you know, give them some video or audio to edit mm -hmm. underneath and then put little YouTube clips or something. Mm. Oh, I've never done it, but right. I did. <laughs> Excellent. If it's on a post it's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well I've already got lots of good ideas. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I'm pleased to say that we will have quite a lot of technology that can make this very very easy to do. Um, once we've tested it and made sure it all works. Um, so that's great. And thank, as I say, do write those things down and we'll bring them together. And it's really interesting to hear some about students using video 
to record themselves and what they're doing. Um, how are we doing for time? Um, not superbly fantastic. Okay. But, um, <laughs> well, I'll speed up. I'll speed up. Okay. Yeah, Let's really. do it. Why not? Yeah, okay. In your envelopes, there is a sort of lilac coloured um, pieces of paper, and I'd like you to take them out, and we can do this exercise in pairs um, quite quickly, I'm sure. Um, and what I'm up to ooh, is. Um, Oh, so if you'd like to, I put far too many, so I wasn't sure how many people are coming, but if you'd like to do this one in pairs, that's good. And if you really don't like the look of next door, then you, or, you're, or you're super fast, do it yourself. Now, this is a list, um, and this is a list that someone has put together, their top ten of, they're all innovative uses of video, because they're for education and therefore they're fabulous, but they going from one to ten in levels of interactivity and it was quite nice to hear some of your examples that really were about building up video and interacting with it and adding writing to it and looking at it before and after um oh there we go so um what i need you to do is just off the top of your heads put these things in order of one to ten with one being the most interactive and engaging for students and i suppose it i'm looking at the the uh, synthesis and evaluation bit of the bloom's taxonomy because i'm like trying to sound clever but uh, <laughs> with the idea that if you know if you actually had to make it yourself a video about x then you really would have to uh, get it together or maybe it was a really challenging group piece of group work that could drive your students crazy couldn't it um so it's just a, a really a bit of fun to go from one to ten you know which ones you think are the most kind of that's just going to be talking to me and which ones you think are really uh, interactive for, for the students in your in your life um and i'll, I'll mm. i'm only giving you five five minutes five no five two two, <laughs> two. and the, it's quite a handy little the reason I liked it. It's a nice list, actually, of things to do with video. Um, I now realise they're called pedagogic uh, patterns. Now I've been to Diana's lecture, so I'll. <laughs> Oh yeah, I have to say at this point, yes, there are no right answers. Um, I just like to know who's got uh, the uh, what? What have we got at number ten? The kind of least interactive, or number one if you've done least interactive, just from somewhere. See if we get some different things. What's there? What have you got uh, there? Using the archive video as the least interactive. Um, and, okay, let's go to the other end then. What have we got as, as a most interactive example of two? Great Ten and nine. Yeah. Students yeah. creating yeah. their own yeah. video and in any particular scenario? Well, anything. Yeah. Yeah. They've yeah. got to think about the content as well as produce it. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing is interactive. Yeah. 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 Hmm? yeah. Couldn't really be much more interactive. <laughs> what about one down from student? What's, what have we got at number nine then? As a, what's coming in at number nine? Talking to the uh, tutorials. Okay, yeah. 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 So p people talking in and you're getting your tutorial again and you can move through it. Yeah, anything? We have an ar archive video footage at nine. Ah, right. Because, uh, so you see that as quite an interactive one. Uh, uh, towards, towards the, the bottom. Oh, right, got you, got you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? Yeah, one and two is what I'm on about. Oh, me. Sorry. So, yeah, so... Oh, video blogging. So, again, with the student blogging regularly through throughout a period of time or on a topic or as a group. OK, well, I'll, you know, I have to show you the right answers, as she says. Um, where's the answers here? Now, the reason for this is just to, uh, is that ever going to open? Open. Oh, go away. Um, one day that'll come up, won't it? Will it? Won't it? Will it? Um, this, these top ten were compiled by um, Clive Young, 
who is at UCL, and he's also, um, it was part of a project called Interact, Video Active. And Clive also hosts the uh, video, uh, Vital, which is video in education, something or other, which we all part of. Now, really, what it was, he was looking at ways of, um, ways of um, categorising multimedia for education and he looked back at a number of pedagogical models that were going from so if you were going from reading into looking at a film but he changed it to, to go from to becoming more interactive um, so it's a really nice um, piece of work that he did and as he's saying he's fitting his top 10 to a particular pedagogical model another one of these like the blooms thing so it's a nice exercise but what it gives us is a really nice list of actually 10 things you can do with video but uh, he comes from talking heads using authentic animated screenshots which very effective uh, how to videos then interviewing an expert but we thought if you sent the students out to do that that would shoot up to number one wouldn't it <laughs> video blogs, video case studies, videoing events in situ, I guess that's taking the cameras with you on a field trip, um, presentation performance skills, and students creating their own video. Um, now, what I've... Um, so if you're interested in this sort of thing, you can just um, take the piece of paper, just Google Clive Young Video Active, and you'll see his full paper, which is really nice, and it has... Really nice descriptions, pros and cons of each of these uh, pieces of work and where's best to use them. And um, I have written a, a blog to go with this workshop and all the links are on there, which is on educational vignettes. So the other thing, if you go to vignettes and um, stick Sandra in or video in, you'll see one called Video is Our Specialty. And what I've done there is put a little bundle of what Mo and myself and other colleagues have come up with, with uh, which are interesting uh, frameworks or principles where people are looking at sort of why use video or multimedia, how does it match, what can I use it for, what should I not bother, where am I getting the most out of it, what theory does that fit, kind of experiential learning or active learning. So it's fab. So we found sort of four of the best ones and um, uh, just down the bottom of that page... Uh, Keep going, keep going, past that, keep going, keep going. Ooh, there we are. Oh, yeah. So these are, the, these are the best of. Um, so you can pop straight to them and see, see what, the, what they've said. Um, I, was, oh, I don't seem to remember adding a bit of text telling you which one was which, but never mind. Um, the Dial E one has got a particularly a set of pedagogic exemplars for using video in lecture halls with sort of crazy things like... A, you take a clip or you show it without sound and then ask people what's happening. But some really good uh, things for grabbing attention. And there's about 12 of them. So there's some real little gems there that we found useful. So this was your introduction to them via Clive. <laughs> Hope you don't right. mind. <laughs> Clive's the guy that we stole the idea of the video cig off, really. Isn't we it? did, we did, yeah. 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 We're taking over him. <laughs> OK, so Mo, All right. over yeah. to you for a, a little... Um, we, we, we try and cater to all tastes, so even though we've made you go through the pedagogy and the taxonomy, we just thought you might like a glimpse of some of the lovely, lovely things that you, we've, we've got for you, uh, some of the tools that are available to you at the city. So yeah, give a quick yeah, question. I mean, I was thinking, oh, let's show all eight, it'll be great. Sandra said, that won't work. <laughs> we've only got time to show two or three, and now we've only really got time to show one, but I'm going to try and do it really quickly. This is really just to get like, a really, really quick overview uh, of some of the tools which are becoming available through Moodle 2 and through other SLE uh, you know, investments at City. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of these, then uh, come and see one of us. I just want to ask you first, the ideas that you've had in all, your, all of your tables, just shout out some ideas. What's stopping you from doing that at the moment? Whatever it is that you're trying to do, what... What are the barriers to, to achieving that? Moodle one. Moodle one. Moodle one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything else? Is there time, any? I guess. Time. The big files, yeah. video files, they scare me. Yes, yeah. Video, audio, Haven't it's big. Haven't got a camera. Haven't got a ca yeah. Haven't got a camera. I mean, yeah. 
these are the kind of things which just, you know, an individual person not wanting to spend loads of money on loads of accounts and equipment for themselves just so they can do their teaching properly is, is going to be barriers. So some of the common barriers which people have to, you know, extensive use of multimedia, not, not having anywhere to store or upload videos, not having the equipment to shoot video effectively uh, and to a good enough quality yourself, not having the technical know-how, not even not be, really being sure what tools are best to use. So I want to first of all just give a bit of a plug to the mill, which hopefully you'll be aware of if you're here at City, the Media and Innovation Learning Lab, now over in Goswell Place, one minute ago. All right, okay. And those guys and the equipment they've got there is is uh, the place to go if you are looking for looking to actually produce video to a high standard. I just want to mention we talked a little bit about the, the lecture recording facility. I want to mention that really quickly. The um, the ability that we have now, which will be available from September in all large group teaching spaces of 60 seats or more, the ability to set automatically set the recording to happen when your lecture starts and stop when it finishes and have it automatically published on your Moodle page so that you end up with something a little bit like this. An automatic recording of the screen, the front of the classroom, a slide sorter so that you can navigate to the particular bit of the recording that you want to watch. It's yeah. It will it's an entirely opt-in process. The lecturers, the lecturer will opt in and say that, that they want to do this. And so even um, if the students wanted them to do it, they don't have to. Uh, it's not necessarily going to work in every single situation, so it needs to be something that the lecturer is happy to do. But you never know how student demand works with this kind of thing. Okay. Does that do you have to do PowerPoint for that to work? No, it'll just record whatever's on the screen. Um, yeah, it could even just be an audio recording. Um, what am I doing here? Okay. Finally, in my last minute, <coughs> is to tell you about some of the uh, integrations that are happening with Moodle to allow you to bring multimedia in. Here is, I'll just show a screenshot of the new Media Space uh, websites, which is a, available to, will, will be available to all staff and students as your own, think of it like your own private Vimeo, your own personal Vimeo account, but stored and managed by the university so that you can upload your own video, your own audio files into your own personal account, manage it all online, share it all online, and it's all integrated with Moodle. So you can upload a video straight into your Moodle course. It'll go straight into your MediaSpace account as well so you can access it online. You can record a screencast from within Moodle and it'll automatically appear on your Moodle course straight away, or record a webcam video without leaving Moodle at all. Finally, the ability to set a video assignment so that students can actually submit a video that they've made or a webcam recording that they're making from within the Moodle gradebook. And then you can watch a student's video in the new Moodle gradebook while typing in your comments and giving a grade. So no need to download them all onto a computer or watch them on a DVD, but it can all be done without actually leaving the Moodle gradebook. Can you put audio assignments? Yeah, sure, yeah. Audio Perhaps could work perfectly size. well. Two gig per file. So pretty, pretty generous. I'm yeah. so sorry to cut you off. I'm just aware that the prizes for the conference sessions will be in 15 minutes. So if you could fill out this feedback and I'll be able to give it so they can do their adding up, it'll only take a moment. And uh, Mo and Sandra will still be here for a little bit longer so please do ask them and there is information on the blog and elsewhere. Sorry, was there a last thing you wanted to say? I was just going to say to people that the mill card is on the table, please take it and if you if you want to ask something, ask, you can ask your local educational technology team or email the mail because we're all one network. So basically we, you know, if it comes to the mail, I'll pick it up or two or three of my colleagues. There's a grid there which is just a simple layout of what you might be using to do, what you might do with, <laughs> what you might use to do what, um, with the names of the technologies. Um, so that if you're asking, oh, I'm interested in the, the lecture capture, 
you know, uh, or whatever. You can see what it's called anyhow. So uh, please do do email through. We, we have like a, you know, we watch the email and um, we can put you in touch with the right people in your school or we'll help you ourselves. But, um, but we have fun with all of this uh, for next, next academic year. So hopefully, I mean, it's just hopefully the beginning of a conversation. We probably haven't managed to answer anyone's questions in very much detail. Which one? But hopefully some ideas are forming and we can move on from here and continue the conversation.